Okay, here we are looking at a Rusco uh, spin down sediment trap filter. And you can see some of the sediment collecting on the bottom there. And we're going to shock this well system. Right here on the water heater, it's got that vent or fan on there for the exhaust. But anyway, it does have one of these, they call them a flammable vapor sensor. And what we're going to do here is we're going to actually remove this temporarily. Um, because uh, last time when we flushed the system with bleach, um, the sensor quit working, so we're not sure if it was the bleach that did finished it off. But the sensor, what we're going to do is stick a resistor. Um, it's about, uh, I think it's up here now. There it is. We put a little, some clips on a resistor. I think it's around 7K or 10K. I mean, probably 10K is what this resistor was. The sensor needs something between, I think, 7K and uh, 25K, the sensor here, for operation. So we're just going to temporarily bypass this until we're done with the bleach, so we don't have to replace this. This thing, I think, was around $20 to $30. So that's one thing I wanted to share. I'm not sure if the bleach finished it off last time, but we're going to just undo these clips here and then uh, put this resistor in here that's on this tape um, in place of that. So that'll just temporarily bypass and make the system will still work. But after we're done with the bleach, we will put this back in. So that's the flammable vapor sensor on this water heater. And then we'll be draining the water heater here and also the water tank out of here. So, okay, we're gonna get going here and start draining these. This one here says well pump, so we're going to flip this guy right here, or these two. It's a 240 system. Alright, well is off, now we're going to start draining. We're going to start draining the, uh, the pressure tank here. And I guess we can start right here. I'm going to turn this on. If I can get this right. There goes the sediment flushed out. And we're just draining it out through that drain there, so. Alright, we're going to wait here until this drains out. You can kind of see, maybe you can see a little bit of a tornado. In the center of that sediment trap there. Moving around. Looks like some sediment coming out there too. Bottom of the tank. Yeah. That means we got a lot of sediment in the bottom of that tank. See how that just filled up? Holy Hannah. You know, we may want this filter before it goes into the tank. <laughs> in other words, filter it, you know, mm -hmm. so it doesn't go into the tank too. But anyway, uh, that's done. It's, and now we'll uh, be taking that off and cleaning it out. Boy, that fill up. Okay, now onto the water heater. Okay, you can kind of hear the water tank draining here. Got it coming through. And what we also did to, uh, up here, we re released this guy because if we don't have air, it's going to stop and start gurgling. So this helps us put air back into the system and uh, let us drain the, uh, the heater here. Fan up there. There's a switch right here. That's turned off now. Okay, here we have four trash cans. We got them filled with water. They're roughly around 33 gallons. We maybe have maybe 30 gallons in them. And we're getting ready to go to the well casing over here to dump the uh, chlorinated water and the bleach and shock the well. So we'll be popping the top off there shortly. And right here is the bleach we're going to be using. You can see it's a uh, 3.78 quarts and the concentration, and we can see that there on the bottom, 7.9% available chlorine. And what that it comes to is we're going, to be, we're going to try to make a solution in each of these first three of 400 ppm, a little bit stronger because we're going to be mixing it with the well water. And they kind of say somewhere between 50 to 200 ppm as a target. So, we'll, But we're going to be double because we are going to mix it with the water that's currently in the well casing. So that's about 20 ounces 
of this Clorox bleach. And then in this one over here, after we fill everything, we're going to put uh, 200 ppm or 10 ounces into this last trash can. So, And then here is the, uh, we got a five gallon bucket here that we made. And then we cut the uh, hole and put a three inch pipe and attach that on the bottom. We're going to put this on top and then we're going to use this blue bucket here to, from the trash cans to fill it and let it drain down into the well casing. So again, that's just something we made. All right. I also wanted to mention, this is the snap ring that we'll put on the inside of this uh, five gallon pail. And then this is some cheesecloth just to keep some of the debris that's from the outside here, which could be leaves or whatever, falling into the water and going down into a, a well water casing. So do we have the uh, top of the well exposed here? And now we're gonna put the basically our funnel on top and start pouring the, the concentrated chlorinated water in here. That's a milk filter. Oh, all right, here we have a milk filter, which I called a cheesecloth earlier, but I found out it's really just a milk filter. Just some paper, just trying to keep the debris from anything in the air here, which could be leaves or whatever, pollen or falling in the grass, yeah. So now we're gonna start uh, using that blue bucket there which is, and I'll clean the bottom off because we're going to be dipping that in in these tanks. And again, this one has 400 ppm, 400 ppm, 400 ppm, and then this one over here is 200 ppm. All right, here we go. Pouring in the water. Goes down pretty fast. A little bit of leaking. And yeah, we need to finish our seal. It's definitely leaking a little bit. Here comes the next one. All right, well, we're going to be trying to force this all down and with uh, the water that's in there. The water heater drained and we got removed the hose and then uh, we put this back to normal so it's not letting air in. And now we're going to go to this union down here and we're actually going to remove this water tank and uh, it has a bladder which we can wash and flush out. Put a pretty good sized pan to catch the uh, water coming out and we can see what's coming out of the water tank. So you can see that I'm going to go down here a little bit. I don't know if you can kind of, well, you can see the sediment that's in the water tank. Um, there is a little bit of bacteria that I was trying to see if I can, some of this stuff right in here, if I can move the, move this a little bit. Yeah, you can start seeing some of that floating there. That's some of this white bacteria that we had last time starting to develop. And last time we shocked it on July 3rd, and now it's December 2nd, 2016, and now we're going to shock it again and just try to keep this stuff in check. Okay, now we're going to take this water tank out and clean the bladder that's inside of it. This guy right here. One thing we need to do is release the uh, pressure on top of the tank here before we actually take the bladder off, otherwise we could cause damage to the bladder. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to release the pressure. Alright, and in a little bit this will be... if we don't lose the little valve in there. Now I can feel the air. I'm moving these nuts on the bottom of the water tank to get at the inside the bladder. This one allows us to wash the bladder out. And here we have about six nuts. And then the top of this kind of comes right off. Nuts off here, and now we're going to remove the top of this, wiggle it off. And there we have it. A oh, little bit of gunk there, and I don't know, there's some gunk in there too. There we go, now we can see some of the sediment in there. I think it's mostly sediment, there's a little bacteria starting to develop. All right, I just wanted to show there is a little bit of that white bacteria. You can kind of see a piece right there in the center. Kind of full. And let's see where else. I think there's some more starting to grow right there. So anyway, we're just trying to catch this early again and uh, keep it in check. And again, it's not a sulfur. It doesn't seem to smell, but somebody suggested this might be a magnesium type of bacteria. Don't know for sure. 
but the water always checks out fine. It's just that it's some natural bacteria that has a tendency to clog the uh, screens. So, the uh, bladder cleaned out. I'm going to see if I can zoom in here and there's enough light. Yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it's back to its natural lighter color there. All nice and cleaned out. So, we're going to now put the cap back on here. Putting the six nuts back on the bottom here, and that'll seal the bladder, and then we'll add the air next. Okay, putting some air back in here. Takes a while, it's a pretty good sized bladder here. And we're gonna put 28 pounds in. Um, the way this pressure tank recommends is to be two pounds less than the like we have a 30 to 50 water pressure switch inside the house, so two pounds below the minimum or the low end, which is 30 pounds, so that makes it 28. So we'll be putting 28 pounds in this pressure tank. Put that union back on. Whoops, that I didn't want to do. And we'll use this plumber's tape here. And we got the air back into the tank. And we got this filter cleaned out and uh, ready to go again. I should probably go like this so that it doesn't go flushing on. Okay, just uh, put the water tank back on here and uh, start letting the water back into the tanks and the water heater. The uh, union back on and now we're going to, we got that valve and I guess this valve will just slowly turn on. When, I guess it doesn't really matter. It'll fill up the pressure tank right away. We'll do that first and go from there. So now the power comes back on. All right, the well pump is going back on. And we'll go back over here. We well, see that the pressure's already up to 30. It'll jump to 28 because that's what's in the pressure tank. And now it'll start going up. So we'll wait till the pressure tank gets pumped and then uh, start filling the water heater and also the rest of the house flushing out the uh, pipes. We have the water heater filled up with bleach and now we're gonna cook it a little bit. On this one, I think you just push the two buttons here, hold it, and it should tell me what's, uh, yeah, what's going on here. There we go, the lights lit up. And this is the hottest temperature, if you just see the one light. But we're just going to go one down from that and let this bleach and whatever bacteria is in the water heater just kind of cook a little bit. And hope that usually what I've learned is supposed to help kill the, the bacteria in the water here having the hotter water. Though the chlorine in there obviously would try to dissipate somewhere, but it's pretty much a sealed unit here. So, all right, so that's sealed back on. We took the filter out of that guy because he was getting plugged up with sand. And now we're gonna go throughout the house and uh, flush, well, flush the toilets and, uh, and drain the sink, or yeah, turn on the sinks till we smell the bleach both the hot water line and the cold water line and that well, then I'll go outside and we'll throw some or put some more of that 200 ppm uh, bleach water in it because now that we filled up all this uh, we took some of that water out of the casing so we'll be heading back out there to finish that job and then this is done for for two days all right here's our last uh, garbage can container that has the 200 ppm uh, mixture of bleach and water and we're going to now put that in the uh, casing of the well here. What I wanted to explain was uh, since this is a four inch diameter uh, uh, casing here and we figured it's about 80, well, 87 feet is the water height so it comes up maybe around 57 gallons of water just being in the casing so that's why we wanted uh, three of the 30 gallon uh, tanks to first fill it up so hopefully that pushes that water down and also into the aquifer. And then over here, uh, now that we've drained uh, at least 30 gallons in the water heater and the pressure tank, we're gonna try to refill that, what we took out of there with just the 200 ppm. So hopefully in the end we get something close to around 200 ppm level with the, you know, the mixture of water in there and here. And then we're gonna let this sit for two days and that's it. So thanks for watching.